So fairly obviously this video is not about obtaining adult content on a kitchen appliance. What this video is actually about is how I set up my own microwave link to get high speed internet in a property which would only otherwise be able to get 10 or 15 megabits over ADSL. So I guess I ought to start by explaining how I got into the situation where this was even needed. Um, essentially, I agreed to buy this property and the developer and the estate agent uh, both claimed in writing uh, that it had super fast broadband, FTTC or P, and uh, made that commitment in writing and then it turned out to not be true. Now, I realized uh, that it didn't seem to be true at the time the promise was made, but I guess I believe that the developer might have been working with BT or OpenReach to try and put in some infrastructure. But anyway, as it got closer and closer to the date when I had to move, it became very apparent that this was not going to happen. And, you know, I live my life online, uh, professionally and, and personally to some degree. So I really needed a, a faster internet connection than ADSL, like 10 or 15 meg. And so, I realized that I'd, when I'd been looking at the place to buy it, I'd been able to see a data center over in, in Bracknell, over in town, uh, the roof of the, that data center I could see. So once I knew I had true line of sight from point to point, uh, it was worth just measuring how long that link would be, uh, partly just to double down on the feasibility, but also because it informs your choice of equipment. And I still didn't know what I was going to order at this stage. So measuring the distance from one rooftop to another is actually quite tricky. You obviously can't use a tape measure and you can't use a laser tape measure because almost all of that sort of thing run out. Uh, but luckily, Google make available a tool that makes this job easy and it's called Google Maps. And so basically what I did was I zoomed in on the satellite view. It's useful to do it on satellite view because you can sort of get more of a grasp of the buildings and what's on the roofs and stuff. And so I zoomed in and put a dot on the map and then zoomed out a little bit and scrolled the map anyway and put a dot on the near end uh, like that. And that gave me a total distance of around 425 meters. So that's well within the range of sort of consumer grade microwave link kit, 5.8 gigs. So at this stage, I kind of knew that it was feasible to use something by uh, Ubiquiti or Microtic or someone like that. So kind of step one of, well, step two really of feasibility was all good. The next thing I needed to do was actually talk to the data center. And so that's what I did next. Centrilogic are mainly a Canadian and North American company who do data centers and hosting services, but they have this branch data center in Bracknell, which was actually built by, I think, GMAC um, to host equipment for uh, giving subprime mortgages. Um, so that all went wrong and Centrilogic ended up buying it. And I had visited the data center myself in the past in connection with my work. So it wasn't completely unknown to me. Uh, so what happened was I put in a call and kind of said, remember me, any chance I can put a microwave link on your roof? And they were super flexible, really receptive. We agreed uh, a price to run a cable, which they had to use a contractor to do, and a price for a few megabits of 95th percentile bandwidth. It was all pretty easy going and straightforward. So this is a panorama that I shot on the first time I visited the roof of the data center and my flat's just going through the middle of frame now. And behind the pole that the TV aerial is mounted on uh, and then just zooming in and that ring of red is my living room window. So I was really confident by then that I definitely had got true, excellent, perfect line of sight and now it was time to buy the gear. And so what I chose was a nano beam AC from Lin ITX. They're not sponsoring this video, they're just a really helpful company. And they did two versions, a 19 dB antenna one and a 16 dB antenna one. And I went for the 16 dB just because I wanted it to be easy to aim. And also 
I really didn't need a much higher gain unit because it's a short link. And I bought a bracket that allows you to stick it onto glass as well for the near end. I don't want to cover too much in the way of specific configuration points because different microwave units will have different setup uh, config options anyway. Um, but some general points that I probably did by accident mostly, uh, but I think are probably useful to say. First thing is configure and test everything at thoroughly at ground level. I actually ran my office PC for about a week uh, solidly through this instead of through an ethernet cable to make sure it was reliable. Um, in other words, I just pointed the two things at opposite ends of the office, turned the power down and it, it just ran my PC through it for an entire week and it worked fine. The second thing I would always say is really, really make sure you've got a note of all the pre-shared keys, all the web interface passwords and everything else. There is no you know, there's no sense in not noting those down thoroughly and then finding yourself two years down the line needing to reconfigure something and being una unable to access it and having to visit a rainy rooftop to change something that should have just been a five minute tweak in the web interface. So note down the passwords and PSKs. And then on the third thing, it's really a question of which end is the client and which is the server or which is the base and which is the client. Um, which has the most generic config and which has the most specific config. And I decided that the near end should have the most specific config. In other words, should be the server end. And the far end should be the client end and have the most generic config. In other words, for example, the far end will try multiple uh, 5 gigahertz channels, multiple frequencies. It's set to try them all, to try and make a connection to the base station at the near end. Even though the data center seems more like the natural base of the connection, it makes more sense to have the data center as the client end and have your, in inverted commas, server end at the near end because if you make a mistake in a config on the near end, at least the worst case scenario is you can factory reset it and put it back to rights. If you make sure that the far end has the most generic config, it will try lots of different frequency channels. It will, you know, there's a, at least a chance if you break, if you upload a dud config to the server end, the near end, well, okay, it might break the connection for a bit, but then when you fix the near end, hopefully that generic try everything uh, config at the far end will make a connection once you unbreak it at the near end. Hopefully that sort of makes sense and is clear. I don't want to go into too much more detail on the specifics of config for this video, but leave a comment below uh, if you're interested in me walking through, doing another short video of me walking through my config or my units and I'd be happy to do it. Most things about installing equipment on a data center roof you can control by planning in advance, but the weather is not one of them. I was very lucky on the day that I did mine, but I would not have hesitated to postpone if it had been windy and rainy. So the first thing I did was mount the unit on the upright pole using the supplied pole mount kit with the supplied Jubilee clip, which is a metal, uh, sort of like a hose pipe clip. But I had read that those Jubilee clips were prone to failure, so I added a couple of UV safe cable ties uh, which obviously won't fail in the same way, just for belt and braces really. And then I installed the cable, wrapped it around a few times and added a very generous maintenance loop and also added lots of cable ties to make sure nothing could really move about at all. And I think the end result, looking at it from the roof edge, was really quite neat and tidy and sort of OEM-ish. It looks like it's always been there. So we got to the point where the data center end was installed and appeared to be working fine, but now it was just a case of waiting for the moving day. And so I did that very patiently and the day came and I moved all my stuff in and that was fine. And then around 11 o'clock midnight, I thought I'd give the internet a try. And so I used the uh, glass suction mount uh, that Ubiquiti su supplied and I stuck it to the inside of a window and pointed it at the data center and, uh, and plugged it into the PoE injector and got absolutely nothing. 
uh, no signal at all, very disappointing, very poor. But then I noticed that the glass, very small writing in the corner of the glass, said it was Pilkington K glass, which is a kind of metallised uh, glass system for heat reflection in hot weather and heat retention in cold weather. So it's kind of insulation, really. And uh, that's, I kind of reasoned, would probably inhibit the microwaves going through it. So I took the ubiquity outside, used the same glass mount system, the suction cup, and mounted it onto one of these glass panels, safety panels, and plugged in the PoE injector with a slightly longer lead this time, and powered it up, and aligned it by eye, and immediately got connection, which was a massive relief, like a huge relief. And when I did some speed tests over it, I was getting 150, 200 meg, maybe even a bit more, straight away on day one. And this is compared to the 10 or 15 meg that I would have got with ADSL. So that was a really huge relief, uh, you know, because I had sort of bought the property with fingers quite heavily crossed that I would manage somehow to get a decent internet connection. And at that point, uh, I had. So little jobs that remained to be done. I tidied up the cabling a bit um, and, uh, and, and tucked it away out of the way. Uh, I also, later down the line, configured the fire brick so that rather than using the data center's essentially single IP that they allocate me and only IPv4, I was tunneling my whole block of IPs, V4 and V6, over it from uh, the uh, L2TP service uh, that Andrews and Arnold provides. Uh, and that, that, that took a few more days uh, and I did a few more speed tests and I tweaked the power output and, and other things and tweaked the levels of things and made sure that the, the bracket was on securely and um, eventually managed to get the speed up to around three, 350 megabits and this is symmetrical so I suddenly started noticing how compared to where I'd moved from which admittedly had quite a fast internet connection it had a, a pair of FTTC 8020s Nonetheless, doing a Dropbox sync or uploading something to YouTube with 300 megabits upstream was just in incredibly fast by comparison. So really pleasing on that score. So then for the longest time really, the link just worked. I did have one tiny incident really early on where the suction cup failed or just gave up and the microwave unit just ended up on its back on the balcony, of course pointing up into the sky. Uh, but what I did to solve that was just hang the whole uh, assembly over the glass panel and although it looks a bit naff, it actually has worked fine ever since. Um, I guess these suction cups are really designed for indoor use, not outdoor use. And if you think about your dash cam mount or something like that, they do always give up eventually and I guess that's just what happened. Um, then in October 2020, uh, I noticed my internet connection had dropped to about 100 meg, which is quite a bit slower than it normally would be. And when I logged into the web interfaces of the two uh, microwave uh, units, I noticed that the far end, the data center end, had dropped from a gigabit to 100 megabits. And so I just rebooted the device and it came back up at a gig and I thought uh, no more of it. But then it did it again, and so I rebooted it again, and the same thing happened again, and then I did it again, and eventually I kind of thought, ah, oh, no, there's a problem here. So I contacted the data center and asked them if they wouldn't mind just having a look on the roof just to see if there was a cabling problem or water or something, and they did. And what they found was uh, at a corner where we'd taken the cable round a corner. Um, it was round the corner of a concrete patio slab, and I guess with the wind and movement and perhaps rain and things, and maybe even UV, um, it had sort of on the sharp corner of the patio slab, the cable had just worn through and water had started to get inside. Um, so it's kind of not really anything to blame the unit for um, that it had dropped down to 100 meg. That's exactly what you would hope an ethernet interface would do, is to slow itself down to a speed that a connection can be made reliably at. Uh, but anyway, they, uh, after uh, uh, ordering some bits in, they replaced the cable and initially it looked great again, perfect. But then I noticed that the connection was dropping a little bit. So I, well, first thing I thought was maybe water had got inside and condensed inside the unit. So my kind of hacky solution to that was to ramp the RF power up to the maximum. It had been much lower than that. But I sort of figured, well, if I run the radio at full 
full blast. Uh, that will generate quite a bit of extra heat and hopefully condense the moisture. In addition to that, I uh, reconfigured the channel that the unit sits on. Um, and I did this because I also had a slight theory that maybe someone had, whilst my unit had been unreliable or even offline, someone had jumped in and pinched my channel or at least started using it. Um, so combining those two, uh, I mean, my connection now is only running at about 150 to 200 meg. So I have lost about 100 meg, which is not great, but it is totally reliable again now. So I can't really complain too much. And it's very seldom that I really notice the difference. Having said that, I do have plans to put in a much faster link in the future. So once more to LinITX we go, and this time uh, to the Microtics section, and in particular their 60 gigahertz NRay units. Um, and they're about the same price as the Ubiquities were all those years ago, maybe a little more, um, but they can do a full gig, which will be awesome. And so I thought I'd do a quick look at them. And first thing I pulled out of the box was the mounting bracket, which is just much more substantial and kind of industrial feeling than the ubiquity stuff. And also much more finely adjustable. Look at those two threaded rods there that you can use to adjust pan and tilt. That's awesome, really much more substantial. And even the strain relief uh, and waterproofing uh, on the cable grommet is better. And then just looking at the thing itself, I mean, the back part is metal, not plastic. And even this kind of bulky bit here is the heat sink for the unit. So again, very impressed by that. And also the threaded uh, bit in the middle has a, uh, a ceiling gasket on it, uh, that black ring there. Very impressive, really, on a first look at least. Haven't looked at the firmware yet. And then just comparing the size of this with the other one, I mean, OK, that picture on the left is not to scale, but you can certainly get an idea. This thing is bigger all the way around. So all in all, I'm very impressed by the first look of the Microtic NRay 60 gigahertz stuff, and I can't wait to replace the Ubiquiti link with it. But that's all I've got time for on this video, and I hope you found it interesting and maybe even useful. If you're planning on setting up a microwave link of your own, then this was never really meant to be a step-by-step uh, -step guide to doing it, but more a kind of how I did mine. And hopefully it's catalytic, if nothing else. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing this video, if you have found it interesting or useful, that will help the channel. This is Blautomation video number one of I don't know how many, hopefully a few. And the next video will be about something completely unrelated, possibly my DIY solar panel installation, or possibly something to do with a Raspberry Pi Zero, or maybe even a restoration of an old hacker radio. So stay tuned. If you do like and subscribe, be sure to hit the bell so that when I make another video, uh, you get notified of it. In the meantime, thanks for sticking around all this time. It's been a much longer video than I expected, and uh, see you next time.